everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Resilient Health Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Darren Ingalls, and joining me today is my good friend and colleague, Dr. Tom Moorcroft. I'm sure you guys, uh, if you've been dealing with Lyme disease, you know of Dr. Tom and his work. And we're going to talk at the end of our conversation today about this upcoming Lyme Summit we have uh, that's going to be unrolling in the middle of May, and uh, we'll give you all the deets on that. But uh, Dr. Tom, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Darren, thanks for having me, man. I'm excited, as always, to have a chance to chat with you and, uh, you know, have a little conversation that hopefully will inspire a lot of hope and, and give some new opportunities to some folks listening. So, you know, you and I have been in the Lyme world for quite a long time as practitioners. You and I are also both recovered Lyme and, in your case, Babesia uh, patients. So, you know, we've also been through the experience as patients as much as practitioners. And I'd really like to talk today uh, about maybe some of the myths of Lyme and tick-borne illness that people seem maybe to misunderstand or get wrong. And I, I want to give clarity to the audience because, you know, you and I, we, we hear this every day in our practices, these things that people read on the internet or someone told them on Facebook. And, you know, we, we do our, our best to try and help educate people on the truth about Lyme and try and dispel some of these things that just often lead to confusion. In some cases, you know, bad, bad treatment or, or bad ideas. So what are some of the things that you come across? Maybe what, what's like the first thing that comes to your mind that, you know, people keep bringing up with you that you kind of have to go, wait, hold on, let's put the brakes on this and let's, let's explore the truth on this. Yeah, I, I love the topic, Darren. And it's funny, as you're saying that, you wrote, write, wrote a couple of notes because I think there's two sides of the coin, right? And there's two things that come up. And I mean, just for the audience who knows a lot of this, uh, this might be, you know, oh, you know, redundant, but some people don't know this. And part of the thing is you don't always need an erythema migraines rash to, to have Lyme disease. In fact, in the medical literature, it's be, depending upon the paper, you're looking at 40 to 60% of the time. And clinicians who see this in real life, not just a research, like are reporting it's probably closer to 15 or 20% of people get an EM rash. And then within the EM rash, which is the classic diagnostic rash of Lyme, we call it erythema migrans, which is why we say EM, so we don't have to say that all day, is <laughs> everybody's looking for the bullseye, right? right? But the bullseye is only about 20 or 30% of the EM rashes. And most of the rashes are little purple or black, red blotches. Some are just like a red ring and you can actually have more than one and they don't all have to be at the bite site. Although the primary one we believe is, but again, we don't see it a lot. And then kind of on that same side of the coin, another myth that's really big is like, you know, oh, there's so many, man. It's like the take doxy for 200 milligrams of doxy for tick bite and it'll prevent Lyme. And that's not actually what that studies show there's the, hey, you know, if your ELISA test is negative three days after you have symptoms, you know, you're going to be better, you know, then you're okay, good to go. No, it's like too early for that test to be positive, you know? And so those are just some of the things where I think people end up with chronic Lyme a lot because people just miss the diagnosis. Um, and, and we could go on and on. I just, I, th that's like a pet peeve area. And I want people to know that it is for us too. But on the other side of the coin, I, I think the biggest thing, there's two big things that pop up for me. And one is that if you have chronic Lyme disease, you must always be directly treating the bugs with an antimicrobial. So whether it's an herb, a homeopathic or an antibiotic, if you're not treating with one of these antimicrobials, your body's going to fall apart and you're going to die. And it's like <laughs> the most horrible thing ever. And the reality is our bodies have this amazing self-regulating, self-healing mechanism. And what we need to do is figure out what's getting in its way and help it get to the next level and then let it decide, you let your body and your response to what we're working with, let us know what's next. And I see a lot of people, they're so focused on trying to get the antibiotics in or the herbs in, they don't do all the low hanging fruit that actually really supercharged self-healing. And so they're, they're just chronic. They're just going down this path of where, you know, they're just, the treatment just goes on forever and ever and ever because they're, they, they have to be, you know, in a war all the time. And so the other thing that I think that you really made me think about when you asked that question is, you know, we, so many of us think we need to go outside and get something else, you know, like, 
that we need the right doctor, we need the right protocol, we need the right gadget, we need the right all of them in the right order, and then we have to do it for the right amount of time. And oh, by the way, I started too late, so I'm really screwed now. And the, you know, the reality is, what I learned from my healing journey was I couldn't find a doctor who knew what was wrong with me. They just kept giving me meds that didn't work, and then telling me that I had the thing that the med was supposed to treat, like depression or bipolar, or you know chronic fatigue syndrome or all the different labels they gave me. But what was so interesting about it was, you know, they just, it was always like, you need to reach out and grab something else and ingest it or do it to get better. And what I found was none of that was working. Somebody handed me a yoga DVD. I dove deep into the yoga and, and it wasn't about the physical movement. It was getting in touch with breathing. And if I was breathing well and full, then I could go further in the yoga posture. But if I went too far and I couldn't breathe, my teacher was like, no, 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 that's not what yoga is all about. We're, we're, we're bringing our nervous system into a state of balance. And so then I started to change my diet because my body told me to, not because of a book or someone else. And then I made other changes. And ultimately I was 70, maybe even 75% better before I met the two doctors that I needed to do the Lyme, the Babesia and the heavy metals. But this journey was eight years before I started treatment true treatment and two years of yoga and meditation and changing my diet. But it was the stuff I could do because yoga and meditation may not be right for everybody, but it was taking back control over my own health, a minimum of 70% of what's going on in my healing. And that's really a big thing for me to get through to people is you're actually in charge. It might not feel like that, but like, let's get back on track with that. And that's a really a big push for our summit too, that you mentioned is just to give you all the the 30% stuff, as well as the 70% stuff with an action plan. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, my, my experience with Lyme was very similar. I mean, I was on oral antibiotics for nine months and again, just cycling through different combinations and getting worse and worse. And I was fortunate to have met Dr. Zhang in New York City, who's a Chinese medical doctor and herbalist. And a lot of it, again, was really more diet and lifestyle oriented. Again, I, I got bit two weeks before I opened my own practice. So the timing Gosh. was terrible. And then when I started my practice, I couldn't afford staffs. So I was doing everything. And, you know, eight months into that schedule, uh, I started to relapse. And that's when I started on that cycle of antibiotics. And then when things just kind of went south, you know, a lot of it was just the, the wake up call, like you're not eating well, you're not sleeping well, you're not taking care of your body. And, you know, I think the herbs made a huge difference too. And they weren't damaging me the way the antibiotics were. I mean, my gut was a mess. I'd lost 30 pounds over, you know, six months unintentionally and uh, just felt awful. So, you know, like you said, there's so much low hanging fruit we can use and it's not just about killing the bug. You know, I think you and I would probably agree if we tested everybody in New England for Lyme, we would probably find, I don't know, 60, 70 percent of people have some antibodies against Lyme and they don't all have Lyme disease. So what's the difference? Right. Is it the bug or is it really the terrain? And, well, and I think you... I would even put it to 90, brother. I mean, it's like <laughs> I mean, it's so many. Um, I think to your point that part of it is it's the host I, with the pandemic. That's kind of like either still going or over, who knows at this point, because <laughs> everybody has a different opinion, which is important to remember. I mean, we don't know all the answers about COVID. We don't know all the answers about Lyme, which is why there's so many different opinions. That doesn't mean that you need to compare yourself to other people and their protocol. To your point, Darren, it's like, look at yourself and really it's the unique expression of your genetics, your epigenetics, how you treated yourself earlier in life, how other people treat it. Like it is you as an individual with this infection or multitude of infections being part of your internal environment. And, you know, with the myths, it's interesting. It's like, I think a lot of people think everybody who gets Lyme is going to get chronic Lyme, which is actually right. not true. Um, and a lot of people actually are cured with three weeks of antibiotics, but they were probably going to be cured with zero. But <laughs> no one studied that. And in fact, we actually, we actually don't, have studies that show people are cured in three weeks, but we just have people who get treated and don't have any more symptoms. But going back to like, you know, the, the pandemic thing, I said, for you want to be the world's worst viral host. And the same thing with Lyme, you want to be the world's worst spiroketal bacterial host, meaning when it, if it's in a tick that's across the playground, it looks at you and smells you because pheromones are a big thing for ticks. And they're like, 
I'm going to go bite the other person because that person is so healthy. It's too hard. And when people ask, like the, the one thing like Lyme has been around forever, right? Over 13 million years. So, yeah. and we have, we know this because we found spirochetes that are distant cousins to Borrelia burgdorferi, that bacteria that causes Lyme disease in ticks that are preserved in amber that are over 13 million years old. We've had human infections confirmed 5,300 plus years ago. It's old. It actually predates human existence. So one of the reasons it can last forever is the fact that it's been around forever and it has really interesting ways to protect itself. And everybody talks about stationary form, persister, round body, biofilm, all this stuff. But one of the things I realized, because I'm really good at teaching and treating those things, but people don't always get better, even though I know as much as anybody about the current science, the previous science, and the actual like upcoming, it's in the works where it's about to be published, but the public doesn't even know about it yet. We're, you and I are in that pipeline. But even though we know all of that, that's not what really gets people better. You know, right. so the one thing I thought about, Darren, is like, why is Lyme so successful? Because it doesn't fight reality it goes to the most broken down, beat up joint in your body. It goes to the most broken down, beat up people. And what I thought was really interesting about what you said is, and I don't mean that as disrespect, because if you listen to a lot of people we interview in the summit, a lot of the people that they find the hardest to treat are the type A doctor, lawyer, CEO people, and parents who are like on a mission to be the greatest parent in the history of parenting because we never stop and take care of ourselves first. But right. Lyme, it'll take care of itself. It'll choose the easy path rather than the hard path. When the path that it chose is getting really hard, instead of freaking out and trying harder, it actually takes a break and just looks around and goes, the environment is not good for me to infect this person right now. I'm just going to rest. And then when the immune system comes down, the person gets stressed out, oh, it comes back out. So it's really interesting. Like I've tried to really learn how to, I never knew what I had was wrong with me. Like I didn't know what it was. So I couldn't fight it because no one knew what it was. So I was gifted this ignorance about the name. And so if I don't have a label, I just go, I'm not feeling well. And I focus on the symptoms, not what I think is causing them. And then I just go about my day and I fix them. And so I'm not fighting like a name. I don't have a, like the war against drugs. We all know what happened with that. We have more drugs now than ever. <laughs> so Anyway, I just think it's an interesting point that like, if we can stop fighting Lyme disease and learn something from it and just say, hey, I say this all the time. You're, you're in my body now. Uh, you're, I appreciate what you're here to teach me. But at the same time, you're not welcome here anymore. I appreciate the lesson. You can leave. So it's not like, like because I acknowledge that it's brilliant and I could learn something from it that it's okay to stay. But I don't go, you have to leave before I actually just share the gratitude. Because it's just that little mental shift is what gets us into the healing zone. Yeah. Well, you know, we talked so much in the summit uh, with different people about the importance of mindset and again, how that plays a role, not just with Lyme disease, but really healing as a whole. Yeah. And uh, I, I think I'm going to leave it at that because I want people really to tune in and get a deep dive into that. Because again, that's a whole conversation into itself. You know, One quick thing we can add about it, though, because it's so important to our healing, every night in the summit, we're going to do a live Q&A. We're going to do a little bit of Q&A, but about half of that session is going to be an experience. We want yeah. you to experience something, and it's not going to be like the DNRS and the Guptas and all. These are all amazing programs. We're talking about things that you can easily do at home without a purchase of anything that is going to give you to, a chance to drop in. But the other part I'd say, Darren, is there's science behind all the things we're talking about. A, a yep. lot of breath work. Everybody like, oh, my Raynaud's, my inflammation. Oh, my biofilm, my circulation. I have uh, hypercoagulable blood. I need to get enzymes. I need to vasodilate. You can do a lot of this stuff just by breathing in a particular way. And it's multiple particular ways. And we're going to show you some of those. And then a lot of this like, hey, how do you... How do you figure out how to get my mind not on the label and get it more on positive action? We're going to dive into that as well, because this stuff is stuff that everybody deserves to hear about. So tune in. Absolutely. Well, the other big myth I want to bring up is you're never getting well. 
And I, I think that what precedes a lot of this, again, unfortunately, the internet is a blessing and a curse. And I, I realized, you know, you and I both run Facebook groups. I you know I think we both went in with the attention that we were going to be the moderators. We were going to help kind of control this conversation to really give people, again, good scientific information. And what I realized is that there's a lot of uh, dogma out there that people have a hard time, I think, navigating because, you know, they read it somewhere on the Internet. They probably read it more than once. And, you know, if you hear it, see it enough, you know, you just start to believe it. Right. And I realized, too, that, you know, the people who recover from Lyme aren't on the Internet, to be honest. They're out living their life. It's the people who haven't done well for whatever reason, who are often some of the sickest people that, you know, they're looking for a way to maybe have community. And so they're on the Internet all day long. And I, I read a lot of these posts and I know you do too. And it's like, if you, if you knew nothing about Lyme and you only relied on what you read on, you know, any number of different Lyme, you know, Facebook or social media platforms, you would probably get the sense that nobody ever gets better. And, you know, I know you and I, our experience is just, that's just not true. Not we have a lot of people that not only get better, but recover, get their life back. I mean, you and I have seen really, really sick people. I mean, I was really, really sick myself. And again, it took a long time. It wasn't a quick fix by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, recovery is possible. And I think that's really important for people listening and for people going to be joining us on the summit because, you need to have this idea that your body is a capable tool to heal. And I, and I tell this to my patients, and I think I even when we talked about it in the summit, it's like, look, you know, the beauty of being human, it, it is built into your DNA to heal. You know, you don't have to tell your, your cells to do this. It's coded. But when people don't heal, that tells us there's something in the way that's stopping that natural process from occurring. And right. again, you know, it's any number of different things, whether it's a toxin, it's stress, it's trauma, it's diet, it's lifestyle. I mean, again, there's a lot of different factors, but there's something there. And so, you know, short of severing a spinal cord, I mean, I think there's very few conditions out there that aren't recoverable. So well, I, I think, you know, you and I really are working hard to dispel that myth that, you know, Lyme isn't recoverable. Well, I mean, it's, it's funny, the, um, I'm going to forget the guy's name, but there's a guy like, I think crashed a plane or something, severed his spinal cord. He decided, they were like, you're never going to walk again. He's like, I'm going to walk out of the hospital. And he did. And it was like literally impossible, right? But you can. And one of the things I think that you really bring up that's so important is your body's so capable of healing. And, 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 I, and I would love for us to change our viewpoint of our bodies falling apart and betraying us because it's so much trauma, so much betrayal that goes on when you go to see the doctor and then they don't believe you. When you talk to your family and they might not believe you because they just don't have the experience but it's like when you start to think that your body's failing you you clearly haven't don't understand how health and healing works because your body at any moment in time no matter how bad you feel is doing its 100 percent best and compensating for all the things the toxins and the environmental stressors that you have that are there hundred percent perfectly. Otherwise you'd be dead. Like literally like your body is this amazing healing mechanism doing everything it can. So maybe the first thing we do is to heal is just say, Hey, my body, I know you're hurting and I'm so thankful that you're doing your best for me. We're in this together rather than a war. Cause it's like people are waging a war online, but they're also at the same time waging a war on their own body. So like if I, if I was your body and I gave you some health, like 10 points extra of health, and you're like, F you, because that's not enough, or F you, you're not doing your job well, why would I, if I, you know, as if we were two different people, we're not, but why would your physiology, you know, and that's actually a lot of what we talk about. Some of the things is your internal ecosystem, your external ecosystem, and how we're all part of this big landscape called life, because Within us are trillions of different cells, trillions of other organisms that make us. And so for me, do I know that Lyme's not in my body and Babesia is not in my body? I have no idea, but I have not had a symptom as a, at this recording in over 12 years that I could attribute to Lyme or Babesia. So after eight years of being sick and another four and a half years of treatment, you know, and, and at the sixth year of the eight year of being sick, 
before the official diagnosis is where I got gifted that yoga DVD that really changed my life. But it wasn't the DVD. It was what I did with the information and how I learned to listen to my body rather than to only listen to people outside because they were giving me that limited viewpoint. So I think you're right. And I mean, I, as you were talking, I just, well, I know you're right that you can get better. And the other, to, to finish my thought before I tell you about this other girl, um, what's so nice is I may have Lyme and Babesia in me and they're dormant and we're synergistic. And yeah, do I have an old athletic injury that every once in a while I go, Ooh, wow. The back of my shoulder or my knee from that trauma. And when I was in my, in high school, it hurts a little bit. Could that 32 seconds of like, woo, and then the recovery be Lyme acting up there? Sure, it could be. But who cares? I'm in balance with it because I don't feel it again for another 14 months for 32 seconds. Yeah. And it's like, so to me, it's like, I'm living proof and you're living proof that you can get better from Lyme disease. But I remember one of my earlier patients came in, you know, and ended up in a wheelchair from PANS in, and well, Bartonella in, and Lyme induced PANS. And then ultimately we were treating her around the time Borrelia miyamotoi came out. So the thing was, she got so used to being sick and they needed a Hoyer lift to get her in and out of bed when she's in high school. And this is a small kid, but she ended up putting custom graphics on her wheelchair to just kind of make it more fun and stuff. And then, you know, we treated her for like four years. She got out of her wheelchair, packed it up, put it in the basement, hasn't used it since. In the last set three years, I've gotten you know, I've kept in touch with the family and they're like, she's fine. No relapses. She's gone skiing the first year, three days, the second year, seven days, the next year, like a couple more than that. But it's like, here's a girl who spent four years in a damn wheelchair and people had to lift her from bed to the wheelchair with the machine. Yeah. She's fine. Go watch under our skin and all the people that Dr. Jones got walking it. And it, you know, just because you're not better yet, doesn't mean you won't get there. So I'm, I'm a hundred percent in agreement, but I would love for people to start, but don't worry about what you're not going to get. Decide what you want, focus on it. And that's part of what we're going to help you with in the summit. But then also just start doing the things you can do at home to take care of yourself. And then when you go to talk to the doctor, the other healthcare practitioner you're working with, your terrain, as you just mentioned a minute ago, Darren, is ready to receive the other healing. So a lot of what I talk about in the summit and all the time is you are worthy to receive healing. But the first step in being in, in truly receiving the healing is recognizing it, being aware of that, and then being open to the fact that you can receive it. So rather than trying to give advice to other people and all that, you can do that because that's cool too. But just be open to the fact that you actually deserve to get better. Like you yeah. truly deserve to have everything you want in your life. And just because other people said that's not true, that's not true. You deserve it. And be like, I deserve to receive healing. And it's different than saying I deserve healing because I almost said that by accident a second ago. It's like, because then you're telling people, you're telling everything how it is. Once you say I'm worthy to receive, then receive the healing and allow your body to heal in its unique order because not everybody just gets their joint pain or their brain fog goes away. Sometimes your body needs to heal other systems before it can heal that so that you can actually have a strong foundation and then have all your treatments work, but it's definitely doable. Yeah. I think I want to round out because it falls on the heels of what you're talking about. Maybe our last myth, although there's so many of them, <laughs> it's just that you have to spend a lot of money and you've got to go to the big expensive clinics and do the big expensive therapies to get well. And that just hasn't been my experience at all. It's amazing how much, like you talk about, you know, between diet and lifestyle and meditation and breath work and things that are, I'll say, relatively simple and easy and inexpensive, how much that can move the needle. And yes, I mean, there are some very high tech uh, things out there that people do, and some people respond very well to that. For me, that's almost never where I start. It's like, if you've got the financial means to do that, but I mean, I've got people wanting to fly all over the world and spend thirty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 at the clinic with the hopes that two weeks of, you know, doing whatever they're going to do is going to be the magic bullet. And I have rarely seen someone that got good long-term benefit from doing these kind of therapies. I mean, some people felt better temporarily. Some people had some improvement, but... I think the idea that you're going to cure, 
you know, 10 years of Lyme disease in two weeks is probably not realistic. And again, if you still haven't done these foundational things, right. I think all these other therapies, no matter what it is, probably aren't going to be as effective until you've really taken care of, again, your gut health, your, your mental, emotional being, and just some of these other things that are so important to our health as humans. And uh, I just, uh, I guess, want to just put out there that, you know, you know, make sure you've got a captain of your ship. You know, you and I both see people that because oh again, they get so much conflicting information and you always feel like you're just not doing enough. Um, but that creates anxiety and stress and this constant FOMO that if I'm not doing this other therapy, if I'm not doing peptides or I'm not doing SOT or if I'm not doing this, I'm missing out. And yet if you're working with a very capable practitioner who's giving you guidance, you know, you've got to have that person you trust because otherwise you're going to constantly question everything they do. You're going to feel like you're not doing enough, but more often than not, whatever someone's recommending for you will help. And you have to give that an opportunity to do what we want it to do. So there is an element of patience with this that if saying, Hey, look, we're going to start you on these herbs or antibiotics, you know, we need to give it time to let your body process it and do what we want to do. And it could be six weeks. It could be eight weeks. It could be longer. So uh, I just wanted to kind of reinforce that idea that um, there is a lot of low hanging fruit that's available that doesn't break right. the piggy bank, but I do think it's important that you have a captain of your ship. I, I totally agree, Darren, because it's like, you know, the reason that like SOT is a great example, the research on it in some areas of medicine, but not Lyme is decent, but in Lyme, the research really isn't there and it might work, but there's also reasons it might not, but until we have research, it's just guessing. So the reason we have so many things to think about is because we don't know the right answers. And so all makes sense, but maybe not just for you right now. And so people are always like, I want the, I, how do I best detoxify my brain? And I'm like, sleep eight to nine hours a night. And they're like, no, no, no. What I, what I want to know is what's the best supplement for it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, the best supplement for um, your brain detoxification is sleeping eight or nine hours a night, being hydrated so that the system that cleans your brain actually because it's 99 plus percent water has water and fuel to do it and then do stuff to not be head forward like you're on your phone all day take a break and get your neck relaxed which will also relax your vagus and then like a lot of our listeners will have things like mold toxin issues what's the best way to get you know the mold out of my body i'm like well obviously you want to be away from it if possible but it's not that everybody can get away. It's more, it's more of a concentration and the amount of mold, but also your ability to deal with it. And one of the places that gets stuck is your face. Well, so I'm shooting a bunch of crap up my nose and putting a bunch of crap in my mouth. But if I'm not pooping, I can't get it out. And then all in here, I need my nose open. Well, guess what? The, the number one easiest way to open your nose is a breathing technique. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use the herbal or the homeopathic or the prescription you know, nasal spray that your provider gives you. I'm just saying, like Darren is saying, why don't we just supercharge it so it actually gets to where you want it to work? So the reason you have yeah. to do your nose for nine months is because you didn't prep it and you have to prep your nose, get it open, and then it works and you get better quicker. And, you know, and it was funny, like when you're saying a captain of the ship, I have a guy at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, I remember where I was talking to him, you know, because we had had a power outage and it just came back on. So I was like on the breakfast bar instead of my office. And this kid's like, Dr. Tom, I saw people for seven years before I saw you. And I've been seeing you for two and a half years. And he goes, my frustration was, it was always too long and it took too much time. And he goes, but you know what? Between the last visit and this visit, I decided to do something different. He goes, I decided to only do what you said and not to second guess it, not to go looking elsewhere, not to partially do what you said, but to only do what you said. He now, and he goes, I now know what you mean by origins of health and why you call your clinic that. He's like, because as soon as I listened to you, I just felt like I just started bubbling up health and all this stuff I've been dealing with went away. And again, I follow up with these folks every year. It's been a couple of years now because this was early pandemic, but he's symptom free. But it wasn't that like, it wasn't the all other stuff didn't work, but it was like he followed one person's protocol and stop second guessing them because there's probably a lot of ways people can get better. Follow the, you know, find an expert you resonate with and just listen to them. Like not 92%, not 32%, not even 97%.
hundred percent, go over it, make sure it resonates with you. If you have questions, get them answered, but then literally only do that. Don't start doing all the other shit, you know? And, and I just think it's so important because time and time and time again, people are like, do you really want me to take that three times a day? Cause I only want to take it twice. I go, yes, I want you to take it three times a day. And then they're like, I don't want to do that. And then months go by, oh, I haven't done it. But then they go, oh, I started to do it as you directed three times a day. I can't believe how much better I am. And so the reason I say it is not to, you know, give these people a hard time. I understand it. Three times a day for some medicines, it can be hard. But yeah. the thing is, you are so worth it. Aren't you worth it? I mean, seriously, is not your life and your health worth six or 12 or 18 months of setting your alarm three times a day and taking some nasty ass taste and herb? Of course it is. And, and that's just the thing that gets me is like, you can get better. And sometimes getting better is being open to receiving and then also not only receiving the healing, but receiving the recommendations that were created by an amazing human being sitting across from you just for you. Well, I, I want to talk about, you know, we've been referencing the summit coming up. So maybe you want to give everybody the details on this, the healing from Lyme disease summit. When is this going to be put out there to the universe? Well, um, because we live in a quantum universe, it's already out there and we've all <laughs> already watched it and all healed. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be May uh, 9th through 16th, 2023. It's going to be amazing. We put it um, at the beginning of uh, May because it's Lyme Awareness Month. And just so people know, we're going to be covering all kind of the things we've talked about from acute Lyme with herbals, diagnostic testing. We're going to be talking about the latest medication protocols technology protocols. We're going to talk about herbs and homeopathics. And we're going to be talking about like what ancient medicinal uh, plants um, and can teach us and how they might be able to help like the whole gamut. And what's really interesting is so many people, Darren, we talked to pretty much almost everybody. The word love came up at one time or another during the conversation. And sometimes they might use gratitude in place of love. Sometimes they use both, but everybody there was like, this is all I do for my living. And the, the part of the person just opening their heart, receiving the healing and being open to doing additional things at home that aren't just like a, an injection or a pill, you know, or some sort of light device. All of those are really good and we cover those, but we also have this thread of healing and we're really, we set it up in such a way that if you show up and watch it, you're going to come out a changed person. You're going to have new opportunities to learn all that. So, I mean, you know, we've got some of the greatest people out there that everybody knows, Richard Horowitz, you know, Neil Nathan, Jill Krista, the list goes on and on, but, you know, holistic pediatricians like Lisa Song, we've got a bunch of people talking about the gut from different perspectives, but it's, it's funny that the line that they all, the, the through line that all the gut experts talk about is the same but they use different language and they approach it a little differently. And the reason we brought them all in is so that you can find someone who resonates with you and you get to hear the information in different ways. Um, and so I'm just really excited because from, you know, from the brain to the toes to even oral health and the impact of what's going on in your mouth to what's going on in your nose and your brain or in your gut, we, we've got it all covered for people. And so I, I just, I'm really thankful. And want to, you know, as I keep speaking about love and gratitude, as always, you know, I think everybody knows I love you as my brother and we, that's why we do all this stuff together. But I'm just so grateful and honored to do this with you because you bring in a perspective that's similar to mine, but also very different. And I think that that's what really made this a cohesive summit is that we're, we're not just saying that we have all the answers. We're bringing together people to open up a healing potential for everyone who watches and listens. Well, what, what's so cool about the summit, and of course, you know, Tom is the main host, I'm a co-host, so Tom does most of these interviews, and again, got to talk to so many great people, and this is absolutely free. You know, if you or someone you love has been dealing with Lyme disease or other tick-borne illness, you're going to want to tune in. You know, you're going to have a whole week to, you know, listen to these great interviews, and then we're going to have an encore weekend where you have the whole weekend to listen to anything you might have missed earlier. And there'll be an opportunity at the end of this to buy these, these videos. And we've got, I think we had a meeting yesterday, I think we've got 50 plus people 
you know, as part of the interview. So there's a great opportunity here to get, again, different perspectives, hear from all these experts around the world. And I think, you know, people who are really invested in health are going to want to own this at the end because, again, I had a chance to go and look at some of these interviews. And there's stuff, I mean, as long as I've been doing this, you know, I'm, I'm 24 years into this and I still get little tidbits from other people. So if I can learn something from it, then gosh, there's got to be a lot of stuff that people who've been dealing with Lyme can learn as well. I think, yeah. And when you go back to it, Darren, it's like, I get what I need today and what I'm ready for. But then later on down my healing journey, maybe I'm ready for something different, or maybe my body shifted. And now something that didn't make sense, say in May, come October does. And you're like, what was that? And I, I, you know, it's so inexpensive. It's an amazing resource. And, you know, I was just thinking like the other part too, is some people are like, to your point, like a lot of people spend a lot of money and a lot of people think you need a lot to spend a lot of money. We're, we actually... If you have a lot of money and you want to help support Lyme research, we've got people there telling you about Lyme research and how you can support that. And if you're a patient and you want to find different sources for financial support, that's in the summit as well. So it's not just the mindset woo woo and then the hardcore science and the quadruple dose DAP zone and the, you know, the porphyrias and all this, but it's literally like one stop shopping to understand what's out there and what you and your practitioners should be talking about. So, you know, um, and that's great. When we partnered up and everything, we made sure that the summit, if someone does want to own it, is going to be so inexpensive compared to the value you get and having that with all the transcripts and then all the bonus material. And what's really cool is everybody registers for free, gets a ton of bonus material, you know, quick action guides, like everything from food, to breathing, I, I, you know, and then for the people who who do purchase it, I even have like uh, an entire guided meditative uh, experience where we're releasing the the vagus, we're we're opening up the chest and physiology, right? We're not just talking the woo, but we're literally talking about moving your diaphragm, moving the lymphatics, and detoxifying it. Right. But this is all part of it. I mean. The, if I and, and when I sell that not as part of the summit, it actually costs more than the summit costs. So that's what we've gotten for everybody. We really want to make sure that you have the access to the free information because you deserve that. And if you're watching it and you're like, I really want to own this, we made it so that it's totally ownable so that you can go back over and over and over. And then again, also, because it's free, invite your friends, invite everybody you know and have them show up to learn. Because one of the things we know for sure is that early diagnosis and early treatment of any disease is better than waiting. And in Lyme exactly. disease in particular, let's get the information out ahead of time so that maybe you're listening to Darren and I today, you're showing up at the summit because you're sick or someone you love close to you is sick, but you also have friends who may be sick and definitely get them on board, but maybe you have a lot of people who aren't but they're not as Lyme aware as you are. What a gift of a free week and then that free encore weekend where they can binge watch the ones that they really resonate with to have them have that understanding, that knowledge ahead of time so that they can share that wisdom with their family, with their doctors. And the other thing too is like, I, I, whenever we talk about this, I'm always trying to talk to the public because they're the ones who are getting sick. But the other thing are doctors are people too. Other healthcare practitioners are clearly people too, as much as sometimes we may not seem that way. Um, a lot of doctors are these days understand people are suffering. A lot of doctors these days have had their eyes open by the pandemic and realizing that not everything happens real quick and gets taken care of like in 21 days or 10 or 14 days like they were told before. So if you know someone who's open to this, who's a physician or another healthcare practitioner, ask them to check it out. You might even want to gift it to them, but when it's free, it's pretty easy to gift because this, we make sure that we're on point with the science and we talk about the science and we talk about the art and the patient experience so that when they show up, they're actually having an experience that talks to them in their language, not in some other Facebook support group language that might work for you, but the doctor's looking for the science and the papers. We've got all that for them because it is so important to us to get the word out to those people as well, because they're the ones that could save someone else's kid 
or your other child in the future that would not have. So just because like Darren and I have suffered from Lyme, just because maybe many of you listening have experienced Lyme or other co-infections, mold illness, it doesn't, part of your learning and your gift from this experience may actually be paying it forward to someone else. And so let's end this freaking pandemic, epidemic, and whatever else you want to describe it as together. Absolutely. Well, we'll drop the link into the show notes. Again, it's coming out on March 9th through the 16th. Uh, we're inviting you. We're asking you to invite your friends, share it with your practitioners. We want to reach as many people as possible. So Dr. Tom, always a pleasure to have you on. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting this event launched with you uh, come May 9th. All right. Me too, man. Thank you so very much. And thanks everybody for listening. We'll see you at the summit.